Hello friends out there in YouTube land. Robert Ham here. Today I want to share with you something special and that is this absolute boss Mustang that I photographed over the weekend. And uh, this particular 302 is a race red Mustang with the Ford spec upgrades. You'll see all that tuning inside. It's putting over 500 horsepower to the wheels, man. And I had an opportunity to photograph it. i uh, so excited about this. And I hope you are too. This is what I want to share with you. I want to share with you the capabilities of an amazing camera, the Fuji X100S. I also want to share with you the capabilities of another amazing camera, the Fuji X-T1. But on this shoot right here, we're using mainly the X100S. Now, the reason that that's important is because I'm shooting in the hot sunlight. And we're going to be looking at a couple of different types of images. Just so that you can see, all my greens are JPEGs, all my reds are RAWs. You'll notice that I've shot in JPEG and RAW, and my purples are the ones that have already been updated. Believe it or not, when I'm shooting with Fuji, I don't really get into the RAW files unless there's a reason to get into the RAW files. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the red right there and uh, turn off all that as well. And so now we can get back to these images. And actually... I'm not even going to, I'm going to just show you a couple of things that are just straight out of the camera because it's very important to notice, okay? Of course, I'm shooting in RAW and everything here as well, but this is a very bright daylight image, okay? And because of that, the background and everything, the highlights can get burned out very quickly. So when I shoot and I'm using the X100S here, people may wonder, you know, they don't understand the capabilities of this camera. And one of the major capabilities of this camera is the leaf shutter, the ability to sync with my flash at a very high rate. So what I have done is I've set my aperture to a nice wide aperture. I've also set my ISO to the base ISO. I'm using 1 500th of a second, and I'm using that three-stop ND filter. And that allows me to get all of my highlights evened out, because that's what I need for a shoot like this. I need to even my highlights out so that I don't have any parts that are really blasting off, but I also need to be able to recover some detail. Another thing that I'm trying to do is I gotta get rid of these, uh, sh these highlights here from the building as much as possible. The X100 series has a leaf shutter, so it allows me to do that. It's got a built-in ND filter, so this one small camera allows me to very easily get all of this in the image with very, very high detail still maintained. And as you notice, we've exposed to the left, so I'm going to be able to bring a lot of that detail out here. In order to do this, I've also brought in some flash. There's flash on the outside of the frame right here that's blasting light this way. You can kind of see a little bit of the highlights right there. We'll be able to take care of that just in Lightroom, maybe go into Photoshop. But this is the type of image that we're looking at. This is the same one. I'm just showing you. These are raw images. All I've done is just cropped it and converted it so that I can go from a portrait to a landscape. And uh, I've got all that right there. Later in Photoshop, I could do something. I'm thinking about using some aggressive lines and putting some advertising kind of marketing right there. But once again, these are images that have had no reduction. They have nothing done to it. These are just straight out of the camera. So this is the image right off the bat. Now, if that doesn't get you excited, then I guess not very much does. Even here with a shot that's standing still, we're able to get a very exciting, very dramatic feel to the photo. Uh, and we're just looking at through at some of these images right now. This is with an X uh, Pro One. Now, I guess I guess we should just go all head on to it. So here is a finished image. This is of the front grille and front quarter panel. This once again is with the 85 millimeter uh, Rokinon F14. I've got a neutral density filter on this, and I'm that's a variable ND filter, and I am uh, about five to eight stops below in order to block the light and still be able to sync my flash. I'm at 1 250th, a little bit higher than the actual flash sync of the X-T1. I have found that I'm at such a cropped in look right here and I'm gonna add some natural vignetting to it when it's done that I'm able to use this image and, and sync with flash. But that's only because I've used this camera quite a bit and I, I understand that the 85 zoomed in so much at 1 250th, pretty decent right there. Anyway, that's our finished image. Let's just go in here and look at some of the details. We are able to bring in quite a bit of detail. We've got the nice hood grill and ornaments and just looking really good right there. Let's go ahead and now look and see if we can get the original image from it. Let's go over to the develop module. And I just kind of want to show you the original 
So that's the input, okay? So this is the uh, 85 F14. We're at, it says F1, but it's not. We're really at F2. It doesn't have any electrical contacts. And then this is the finalized image. So we're pulling quite a bit of detail out of here and really just tightening the image up quite a bit. I'm gonna go back to the library. This is a, like basically a little monochrome color that I'm doing. I still need to come in here and tighten up the wheels just a little bit. I wanna add some, some contrast to them. I wanna bring in the spark right there taken with the TCL X100. Notice it says 33 millimeter. So it's really a 50 millimeter perspective. I'm using the X100S, but I'm using the TCL X100. Just kind of give you some ideas. These things just look great. This is the X-T1 with the 85 F14. We've brought in a lot of that beautiful detail up at the front of the wheels and everything. This is another one we're using the F14 again. And you can see that I'm able to get some nice desaturated tones in the background, even bring out a lot of that color that's in this concrete right here we still have the blues that are showing up just an excellent shot i love it one of my favorites right here that comes across just bam just powerful and strong once again using the 50 millimeter tcl x100 hey look there's guys out there that have no clue about what the fuji x100s is capable of no clue whatsoever specifically adding that TCL X100, that 50 millimeter converter. You go from a 35 millimeter perspective to a 50 millimeter perspective, and you're still able to maintain nice subject separation, as well as an excellent, just an excellent image. And this is coming out of a camera that's 2012, 2013. I think it's 2012, but several years old. That's because people don't recognize just what Fuji's doing differently. I've got several videos on that, but this is a great video to share with you exactly what you can get out of a Fuji camera. Now we're going down to some driving shots right here as the Mustang's coming around. I absolutely love this one. Beautiful shot right here. You're gonna see several in this range and what you're gonna notice is when we're looking at the color right here, okay? So when I took the original picture of the car, the light was hitting it in such a way as the highlights kind of blasted out the, the race red and so we needed to bring that back. So you'll see that race red brought back the nice part is we don't lose any detail in the bumper okay and that's something you got to be careful of when you're when you're adjusting your hue saturation and luminance also I want you to look in the background so here in the background you can see how the oppenheimer building and everything even at f2 because the vehicle's so far away from me right now and i'm shooting this everything in the background is still relatively crisp right so what i've done is i've gone into photoshop and I've created a separate layer. So you can, this car is one layer and this background is another layer and I've added a Gaussian blur. I like this shot because using a circular polarizer with the X100S, I was able to get this wide shot and get the driver, the owner of the vehicle's face. I was able to get his face in the shot at the same time. Uh, this has gotten just absolutely rave reviews um, and, and we really like it. So here's what we've got so far. I've got several more that I'm working on but really, this camera has done an absolutely fabulous, fabulous job. I'm, I'm so excited about it. Some nice images, did some detail shots, got some for a panorama. And, and once again, just to remind, remind you, these are, these are raw images that we're looking at. Some of that big engine hood. I haven't even begun working on those. Shot nice and dark in here. People always ask, you know, hey, what were your settings and everything? Settings for chumps. I don't think that settings are important because I can go out and shoot this all day long. It really has more to do with skill. It's like when people say, oh, it's such a beautiful camera. You know, it's like that camera takes such great photos. No, it's not the camera that takes great photos. The camera is just a tool. And the Fuji X100 series has a lot of additional features that make taking great portraits easier in the hands of a capable photographer. So you can have these settings and everything else. But if you are photographing out there and you don't have a, uh, a leaf shutter, you know, you're not going to be able to get the type of imagery that I'm getting without really, really going around and doing something different. Or if even if you have a leaf shutter, you may not understand how to use it in the same way. So my settings don't work so well for other people. And all I'm saying for you is get out there, practice, shoot, 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 move and communicate and get your vehicles, get your cars, get your camera, get your gear out, as Matt Granger says. I hope you've enjoyed. I'm Robert Ham with RobertHamPhotography.com. Catch me over on the flip side. You can find me at Rob Ham Photo, both Instagram and Twitter. And as always, keep shooting, my friends.